I tried to record this on my iPad real fast, but I guess the storage is full on this thing, so we're just going to do it like this. This is the uh, first copy of As a Cartoonist that I got in the mail from Fantagraphics, the advanced copy. It's a little dinged up. Uh, my son dropped it off the bookshelf, and I think it has some little greasy fingerprints on it, too. Uh, so I have a link in the description of this video so where, where you can get your copy. The book doesn't come out until July 26th, so you can pre-order it, or depending on when you're actually watching this video, you can order it. Um, so the inspiration for this book was from one of my favorite comics, Curses, by Kevin Heisinger, which is a collection of uh, short stories. Supposedly, when you read it, it, it reads like a collection of short stories, but um, when you get to the end of it, you kind of, you realize that there was one narrative throughout the whole thing, which was, it's about Glenn Ganges and his wife trying to have a, a child and deciding if they, if they should or not. And um, that is kind of the theme of the whole book that runs through all the stories. So I like that. I wanted to do something that seemed like a collection of short stories, but was ac but actually has a, a bigger story to tell um, kind of slyly. So you can see, for example, actually this is funny because this was not intentional, but I just now noticed this. These end papers, the end papers here. <laughs> I didn't design those end papers, but uh, that is pretty funny. It's got the moon and the clouds and everything. This was designed by uh, uh, cartoonist Kayla E who I just met this weekend at Heroes Con. She's delightful. So here's the press release from Fanagraphics. Um, so, you know, here this is something I've done a t-shirt of before, but it's something I, I believe in, which is that comics have saved my life and that comics will kill me. And this is the first book dedicated to my son, Remy. So here, this was in uh, uh, the cover of Tattle Creek, a Canadian magazine. All right, so the way I wanted to start this off was to, to come up with like a, a smaller, like an alternate canon of cartoonists. You know, there's that book uh, that's just like Modern Masters or whatever, of, you know, cartooning. It's always like Will Eisner and Jack Kirby and stuff like that. And I wanted to just come up with a new list of cartoonists. Um, so I just put, you know, Jackie Orms, H.T. Webster, Maury Turner, Peter Arno, uh, Bill Malden, and then, of course, the master cartoonist who we don't know his name. It's lost to time. So here's uh, the beginning of this story uh, that we follow the master cartoonist throughout the, this book through, you know, newspaper clippings. By, collected by Peter, uh, Peter Maresca of uh, Sunday Press. So, uh, <laughs> so we have uh, you know, a story about uh, my childhood, um, sketchbook page of my drawing desk in Columbus, Ohio. Then we have this story, Colorized, which was originally in Blamo, number nine, um, White River Junction, Vermont. About my, it's like a fictionalized version of my uh, stay at the Center for Cartoon Studies that kind of flips back and tells the story of my upbringing and my, my parents' divorce and uh, my history of, uh, in the Church of uh, Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So there's uh, Steve Bissett, who was one of my only friends there, one of like three friends I had at that school. Uh, so we have landscapes, more mellow mutt, in beautiful color, <laughs> 19th century portrait. So here we go. This is the first story that is a, a dream about um, a memory I have uh, of going fishing with my, my father. Um, but of course, we never went fishing together. He, he wasn't, I didn't have a relationship with him really, you know. He left when I was pretty young, so after my parents divorced, you know, so I didn't, so this, this just didn't happen. And that's kind of a, an ongoing thread in this story is, it's about a career in comics. Um, and uh, a relationship with a father, you know, so we have my father's true story. 
you know, now I've left Vermont and see now these are the Columbus, Ohio years. Some stuff from my journal, living in Columbus. Um, that's um, Evan Dorkin. So this is from Blamo 10, the story of the hypo. And so this is what I mean. I was kind of slyly putting this book together through different anthologies and issues of Blamo. Like I knew that all these stories were going to fit together eventually. So more diary comics. Another checking back in with a 19th century cartoonist. Another landscape with pages of art um, lost in time. You know, it's the, that whole idea of, you know, your life's work and when you're gone, it just is, scatters to the wind. It doesn't matter. Then we have this story about my little brother, Jonah. And I'm visiting um, Denver, Colorado for an art show in the Denver Art Museum. That's Leslie Stein, who's a really good friend of mine. We text all the time. So this is just kind of the climbing the ladder of cartooning. I have a, my own my work in a, in a gallery that I really wanted to be in, finally, but I can't escape my childhood, which is in the form of my younger brother, who's very crass. You know, I, I can't escape my roots or something. So here we go. How to make it in comics. John Porcelino. It's a good uh, how-to for all the young kids out there. Checking back in with 19th century cartoonists and the invention of the color yellow. Um... Then we have uh, a European signing story. Going to Europe to, uh, to uh, sign my books. Man, holding this iPad sucks. I need one of those uh, cranes or one of those like little arms for this thing. So here we go, diary comic page, another story from my father. Another childhood story with my friend Mellomut, which was a little plastic dinosaur, baby dinosaur that came with uh, Ellie Sadler, the action figure uh, for Jurassic Park. And here we go. This is um, Beverly, New Jersey, which is a true story. It was originally published in Blamo 10, uh, just recolored here. And it's about me and my father meeting again after 15 years of not seeing each other and us making amends. So that's storyline of, of um, want, you know, wanting that relationship or whatever, you know, that whole, that whole thing comes to an end here. And then we have uh, finally the 19th century cartoonist, his retirement and death, and then how it feels to be a cartoonist. And then here we go, Columbia. So this is up to current day my life now with Amy, my wife, and that's us collecting this artwork from that had scattered to the winds of forgotten artists. And finally, a story of becoming a father myself with my son, Remy. So it, it is a big circle, you know. Um, and then we have just the sources and some comics, a list of comics that mean a lot to me that I pull off my shelf several times a year. And that's for anyone who's interested in the end papers. So it's a, it's a, it's a slight book. I mean, it, you know, it's a hundred pages or so, maybe a little over that, but it, but it's, um, I packed as much as I could in there. And I think it's one of my favorite comics I've done. One of my favorite books I've ever put together. Uh, I put it together kind of late at night or early in the morning when my, my uh, son was sleeping, my wife was catching up on her sleep. And um, it's a special book, and I hope that you'll get a copy of it. Uh, thanks a lot for watching this, guys. I hope you're well.